All right. Welcome back to Comic Book History, episode 61. I know last episode, basically, I kind of, in the way, covered like a lot of Steve Ditko, Ditko characters. This one, I'm not doing anything with Steve Ditko. Nope. This one, I'm talking about a group who have been occasionally been talked about in documentaries when it comes to Mama Comics. But, it come to think of it, not a lot is discussed about this team. Yes, I'm sure people have done retro reviews. I know my friend Edgar, he's doing retro reviews of this series. I think he's got like issue 10, I think it is, for this particular book. What book is it? The Avengers! Yep. Now, I have checked. I have not done comic book history on these characters. Well, uh, on, on this particular series, per se. But mostly for this video, I'm only discussing their time in the 1960s. Yes, I'll be discussing for the next several videos each decade for the Avengers. Now, I've technically talked about a little bit of the group of the Avengers. Well, I'll mostly put up talk about a couple other villain groups. The Leaked Legion and the Masters of Evil. And, of course, Legion of the Living. So, I might talk about a little bit here, but not very much. Okay, the Avengers' first appearance was in Avengers number one. The founding members of the team were Iron Man, who was actually wearing his old bulky armor, though this time this point was gold, which was silver. This is actually the technically the Mark II attire, yes. Also with the Hulk, Thor, and Ant-Man the Wasp. Now, people tend to think that Captain America is part of this lineup. Nope. Doesn't join a little bit later, I'll get to that. So... Now, this particular first issue is basically covered in, in, in one of Linkara's, like, Secret Origins Month. It's actually a really good comic book. It holds up pretty well. It's It's been had some slight alterations here and there. Like, so mostly some sexist dialogue in the part of Ant-Man, per se. Now, the issue itself is written by Stan Lee and drawn by Jack the King Kirby. Both men have since passed away. Jack Curry passed away in 1994. Stanley passed away just a few years ago. Passed away in 2018. Yeah, can you believe it's been three years since Stanley's death? Which is also the same year that Steve Ditko passed away. Mm -hmm. Yep. And this issue has mostly been pretty, pretty classic. It, it's a classic issue. The cover itself has been spoofed a few times over the years. Even spoofed for, get this... One of the secret or, secret invasion books. Yeah, they actually spoofed this very cover. Yeah, where it simply puts the five fun members of the Avengers on the cover with Loki there. Yes, Loki. Who on the cover for it was the God of Evil. Who manipulated the Avengers to fight, well, mostly the Hulk afraid for wrecking a train. And they... Simply had to fight the Hulk, but they later came together as a team at the end. And it was the Wasp who suggested the name the Avengers. Now, why did the goo come together? Popular demand! Yep. And here's the thing. Now, my guess is Marvel would probably want to do a team simple with Justice League, but Justice League has probably, at that point, at, well, they around just for a few short years. They probably were still like hotcakes back in the 60s, so... I guess Marvel was like, hey, why don't we do something similar with that? Well, they, they kind of had that good start with Fantastic Four, per se. But then two years later, we had the Avengers. And here's the thing. Jack Kirby is responsible for creating all five members, all five, created all, all the members who were here. Even Stan Lee is responsible for creating all these characters. The characters who open in issue four, technically no. Issue two is the introduction for a couple of really good things. One is the introduction to the Avengers' long-time base operations, the Avengers Mansion, formerly Stark Manor. And this particular building would mostly remain the main base of the group for the next, mostly for the next 40 years, with the exception of a couple of times, but mostly put, it was their base operations. Yeah, once in the 80s, and I believe once in the 1990s, where... This particular building was not their base. It stopped being their base back in 2004, though they get brought back to concept back in 2010. And this particular issue was the introduction to the Space Phantom. Yes, the Space Phantom, because it's from space. And mostly, funny, just manipulate the Avengers, just, uh, well, like, how should I put this? Just 
Try to turn against each other. Now in case you're curious, like, wait, what the heck happened? Why didn't they have something to explain, like, when they first got here? Well, there is a, there's actually a backup story, believe it or not, published in Avengers Classic number two. Yes, this actually was published back in 2000. I actually explained this, of how the heck, uh, basically, of uh, the actual first appearance of the thing, and is also have appearance by Scourge the Executioner, and more the Enchantress. Which I know this this particular short story was actually adapted for an episode of the cartoon show, which everybody loves, Avengers vs. Minus Heroes. And at the end of the issue, the Hulk quits, and he does not officially rejoin the team. Though he does is offered a few times to rejoin the roster, he doesn't fully rejoin the roster until 2012. It takes him almost 50 years. To consider going back to the Avengers, despite the fact he's had many offers, he's been asked several times. Like he did briefly team up with him for for issue 100 per se, but he's been offered several times. But it's like he just wanted to be alone, or he's just too busy. But I do have a theory of why in the world the Hulk was not allowed to join the Avengers until 2012. I think some people in Marvel just didn't want him on the Avengers. Because the, the the Avengers already had two powerhouses in the form of Iron Man and Thor. Why would he have Thor one for? Yep, in issue three, we had the them looking for the Hulk, which he teamed up with the Submariner. This would actually play this is actually be unintentionally planting seeds for the formation of Defenders ten years later, believe it or not. Yep. So Hulk fought against the Avengers in issue three, and then issue four. The Avengers hit the frickin' jackpot in this issue. Where Namor the Submariner finds Captain... Am f finds a block of ice in and, and, and Alaska of all places. And we have these Eskimos worshipping this thing. I'm like, I'm like, why the heck are they worshipping it for? And he proceeds to break the damn thing. And it's revealed this ice cube has got Captain America in it. Yep. And, they're, and he's found in the water by the Avengers in their sub... And technically, this is the sub's only appearance. Well, it appears mostly in flashback after this, but I'm like, since when the Avengers have their own sub? But my guess is because of Tony Stark. Because he's rich. Also, with issue number three, that was the that was the first print in the series of his new armor, which he would wear for a good period of time. Hmm. Excuse me. That is actually the Mark III armor, the one where, if you see in the action book, this is the armor where Tony Stark can actually lift up his mask like oh look at this i have a it, it's like how it's basically in a way kind of based upon the old knight armors where you can actually have the front face plate unlike the original ones were big and bulky per se uh -huh. yeah. and this look mostly put the 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 red and gold design this would mean the basic design for the iron man suits for the next 60 years up until present day he would in fact change the colors a few times mostly put it's the same color design burgundy and gold yep and with issue five was it i don't think it was issue five five was i think it was introduction of another character believe it or not let's see i'm trying to look up in here side for this five i know that's six introduction really big character okay yeah five was Something they did with Thor and the Lava Men, per se. Yeah, it's not really noteworthy issue. Six, meanwhile, oh boy, this is a really big one. Six is the introduction to the Mass Zemo and the Mass of Evil. I'm not going to go deep into the Mass Evil with this one because I've already discussed them, per se. They appear in this issue seven, nine, and ten, and fifteen and sixteen. They are basically the first recurring villains of the series. And Zemo himself basically... Now here's the thing. The reason why this, this version of the group actually stopped appearing was because Cap killed off Baron Zemo and then later on this shade of the rule where Avengers don't kill. Per se. Yes. Now issue 8, technically, we have sort of in the way a change of the guard for the book briefly, though the RS of this particular issue will come back a couple times. Yes, issue 8 will be technically the last regular issue that Jack Kirby would actually draw, but he would come back a couple times after this. Issue 8 was the introduction to Kang the Conqueror. Yep, Kang the Conqueror. 
who is a well-known Avengers villain who previously appeared as Rima Tut in the pages of Fantastic Four. But technically, this is Kang's first appearance. And he became a long-time recurring villain. Later on, we had the introduction of Immortalus, who is a future version of Kang. Now, in the very next issue, issue 9, we had the introduction to quite possibly one of the most... Let's just say one of the most goofiest and one of the most strangest characters Stanley ever created. Wonder Man. Yep, Wonder Man. Though issue 9 was basically the first time Don Heck took over as the artist of the, the book. And he was the artist for a good majority of the time. Mm-hmm. Yep. And pretty much they have Wonder Man appear in this issue. He Apparently he dies. Though he does come back into almost 100 issues later when another, two writers after Stan Lee leaves the book when he finally makes his return. He's basically in a coma for a long period of time. And after times with the, well, Mass of Evil, whenever they did appear, it just basically sort of a very strange, I, it's very strange book per se at this period of time. Yes. Let's see, 12 was the introduction to, well, them fighting the Mole Man. Yes, the freaking Mole Man. 13 was the introduction to Count Nefardia. Yes. Count Nefardia. 14 is them versus this odd thing. It's not really noteworthy of an issue, per se, 14. 15 is the, well, the end of Baron Zemo. Yep. And technically, with issue number 16, we have Jack Kirby's first first of two returns to the book. And we have an interior change of the guard. At the mostly put, basically from issue 4 to this issue, the line for this book was simply Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, the Wasp, and at the time, Giant Man. Now, with issue 2, he became Giant Man. Yeah, this was explained because in the pages of Tales of Dash, his book at the time, he was regularly appearing in this book, he changed his name to, to Giant Man. Though basically about a year at basically 12, 14 issues after this, he would have another co-change. Now, Thor himself technically was not pairing the book for a long period of time. Yeah, it wasn't until like around issue 100 we actually finally returned. And he was going to be leaving the team at this point. He was off doing his own thing, his own book. While in the case of Iron Man, Giant Man, and the Wasp, they decided to take a leave apps for the team for brand new blood in the group. And they want, um, my guess is Lee wanted to take a shake up of the book. So he removed these three memories and replaced it with Hawkeye, Quicksilver, and Scarlet Witch. And this was the primary lineup for the next 14 issues. Yes, up until issue 29. When the Wasp rejoined the team, along with Giant Man, who changed him to Goliath. And pretty much, like, right after this, it's, like, a very odd period of time when it comes to the Avengers. I mean, the only, like, noteworthy thing is they found some Chinese film for a couple issues. We have the introduction of the Swordsman, who actually attempts to join a team in issue 20. Doesn't really go anywhere. He does actually return to the group until Steve Echohart takes over the book much later. Though they, he wouldn't count him again in the first annual when he was part of that group of villains assembled by the Mandarin to attack various places around the world. And the annual itself was actually written by Roy Thomas, the guy who took over the book from Stan Lee. And mostly put, if you read these issues, it's kind of like, not like the original first 16 where it's a good classic run. And with this era, it's like, interesting at best. It's like some interesting stuff here and there. Not a lot of really big noteworthy stuff per se. Aside from the fact that we have, well, stuff with Goliath who joins issue 28. It's mostly about what's going on in his book, so he changed his name to Goliath. And he also added himself to the Avengers as Hank Pym. And also, not long after Wasp and Giant Man, well, Goliath rejoined the team, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch briefly took a belief of absence for the team. Yes, for some reason, Lee decided to briefly move this creep in the book. And then, like, here's the thing. Right after issue 29 happened, five issues later, Stan Lee stopped being the regular writer of the book. With 35, basically, with Roy Thomas to go with the book. And he would stay here for the next 
70 issues. Yep, 70 issues. And during this period of time, we get a little more interesting stuff happening. Like in issue 38, we have the we have Hercules joining the team. Yes, freaking Hercules. Yep, he joins the roster during this period of time. Yep, he joined issue 45. Though he technically first showed issue 38 and 39. Yep. In issue 50, we have the introduction of Ultron. Yes, Ultron makes his first appearance in the comic books. On the cover, it looked like though the giant may return his powers per se, but it a lie that he doesn't fight the Avengers mostly it's just the, them versus Ultron for the first time and this becomes a really interesting period of time prior to issue 60 now two issues after the introduction of Ultron we had a debut of basically a couple of new people we had the Black Panther join in issue 52 right no 58 no, no 52 plus the introduction to a new villain the Grim Reaper, who wanted revenge for his brother's death. The Grim Reaper, in case you know who this guy is, he is a he is basically a B-list uh, Avengers villain, who at one point was basically beaten. He's been the thing about this character is is that there's a recurring gag involving his death. Wow, like like. He's been killed so many times over the years. His most recent time he died was when Tom King killed him off at the start of his run by being killed and being whacked up with a cookie pan. Yes, being whacked up by cookie pan. Nobody this wouldn't kill somebody. But he was being hit this thing while being hit with a by the one person carrying was an android. Yes, who happened to be the wife of the vision. Yep. And well. <laughs> We did have, well, and not long after Black Panther joined the team, we had, well, the introduction of the Vision. Yes, in a two-part storyline where five issues after he joined, we had the Vision appear as a villain, and then the very next issue he joins the roster. And he's a creation of Ultron. He's part of the Ultron storyline stuff here. Mm -hmm. Not long after this, we had the introduction of the Yellow Jacket, per se. Yep, the Yellow Jacket. But prior to this, we had the introduction of the third Black Knight. Yes. Now, what had happened, though, is that the previous Black Knight, who was technically the second one, who was actually the uncle of this one, died after encounter with Iron Man, who apparently finally fell off his horse. You were thinking, wait, he fell off his horse, and that's, that's how he really died? Well, he was flying, he was basically a, a flying horse. A Pegasus. Mind you, yes, an actual Pegasus. A horse that would later go to Valkyrie in the 70s. Because Black Knight was turned to stone when he used her ho his horse. Yep. He first joined as a provisional member, and then later on he joined as an action member, thanks to, of course, stuff going on with King the Conqueror, and of course, the Grand Master. <laughs> yep, it was during this period of time, like, just just prior to him joining, we had the introduction to a retcon group that, they, that well, that Roy Thomas would himself create, and that is, you're probably thinking, what group is it? The Invaders. Yep. They first appeared in 1969, which is technically the end of this. Yep. The later on, we have the introduction of the Liberty Legion and all after this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're getting quite an interesting time with the Avengers this period of time. Yes, the first decade of the Avengers. So new members, but not a lot of really interesting stories like... There is some stuff interesting, though, when it comes to Roy Thomas for his run, per se. I mean, he had introduction to Vision was really good. And, of course, the the Black Panther joining the roster. I mean, it's some good stuff. Now, Roy Thomas, this this technically be a, let's just say, a trope of Stanley to do. Where, like, a lot of the titles he basically wanted to leave the book for, he would have the Roy Thomas. And he did it with pretty much almost every title he started. He did it with this title, The X-Men, Daredevil, and 
I think there was a lot, a lot of really big ones per se. He did do briefly for me as the experiment for like one issue. Excuse me. Before it came back, because at this point in time, Lee had started pretty much almost every major title that was going on at that point. We also had Tales of Astonish with Captain America and Iron Man in the book. We had Tales of Astonish. Well, it was Tales of Spence. Tales of Astonish, originally with Hank Pym, with basically Hank Pym and the Wasp. And later on with the Hulk as a backup feature. Who kind of in the way kicked out Hank Pym and the, and the Wasp. Mm hmm. Yep. Now, in the case of Hawkeye, well, not a lot of really interesting stuff related to him. There was actually at one point, Kane came back and it caused Captain America to leave for an issue and came back the following issue. But you have to read these issues to understand what the heck is going on. Because it feels as though you read like a very long running storyline. I mean, some storylines here and there, mostly it's a lot of really standalone ish issues. That's the thing with this period of time. A lot of standalone issues. Very rarely we have any cliffhangers. I believe there's actually one or group of villains introduced here. Let's see here. Where are they? Hmm. Actually, no, I can save that for the next video. I kind of think it was actually, I think, of like one more group of villains they fought here. Well, they did fight the Circus of Crime for one issue. And let's see. Oh yeah, they also fought a group of villains known as the Sons of the Serpent. Yeah, it's not a lot of really noteworthy stuff for this one. They only appear for like a couple issues and that's it. Yeah, just basically just a minor thing. It's not a really big thing to talk about when it comes to the Avengers. Not necessarily, no. Let's see. I'm looking up here to see if it was like one other villain who did show up here. Who is a noteworthy villain. I'm sorry about this. It's basically... Excuse me. Let's see. Oh, yes. One other villain. The Super Adaptoid. Yeah. This guy himself was a noteworthy villain for the Avengers. Now you're probably thinking, the Super Adaptoid? Who the heck is this guy? He's... If you think of him, he simply put Marvel's version of Amazo. Though he made his debut after Mazo. Yeah, he made his debut back in, in 1966. Yep. Yeah, he first fought the Avengers in... Uh, let's see here. Yeah, he first fought the Avengers in... Issue number 45. Mm hmm Yeah. But I think I'll save, uh... Well, a lot of, let's say... Other stuff related to the Avengers in the next episode. But yeah. 60 was a good start, per se, for Avengers. But 70s is where a lot more interesting stuff happens. And a lot of stuff, basically, people tend to know about the Avengers past the 60s. The seventies was a good time for Marvel because Marvel did great compared to DC, who did terribly in late by the time the late seventies went around. Yep. So yeah, that's it for Circle of You, and that's gonna be a video today because, well, not much else to talk about. So tomorrow, exclusive reviews for One Piece, Barto, My Hero Academia, and I'm gonna hopefully gonna do another comic one because there's a lot more interesting stuff to talk about when it comes to the Avengers. Okay, to the next video. Bye.